Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, this is a new week. And I'm telling you the truth, God is doing amazing things in our lives already. Hallelujah. I want us to pray before we start this broadcast and then we'll call for that daily bread. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let your truth flow freely through this medium. And let your spirit rest upon everyone who's watching and listening right now. Open their hearts and communicate yourself into their hearts that they would know and believe. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you. In Jesus' name, I declare right now every burden in your life is lifted up. Every yoke in your life is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now join me as we call for that daily bread. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about how to use the Bible. And last week, we got into certain um, things that were very important. And I remember last week, Thursday, the Lord laid it in my heart to speak on Titan. And because recently, the, the message on Titan came under attack again. You know, it's so funny. It's so funny. Why... Um, Titan is a problem to people. And when you listen carefully to them, you will realize truly is lack of understanding. I'm sorry to say, lack of understanding. And understanding knows no age. It's when you apply your heart to learn and trust the Spirit of God that He will teach you. So someone of maybe 15 year old, 15 years old may have greater understanding in a matter than one who is 70 years old. Because that one applied his heart to learn. A 70 year old person may be more experienced, but you see the 15 year old can, can pinpoint a matter and get to the end of it. And also the 70 year old man can by his experience miss the point. So we've got to be careful, especially when it comes to the things of the spirit. We've got to be careful. The only way we can be careful is to go to the spirit of God and ask him to teach us. Not us sitting down and carrying the Bible and doing a study on it. I'm telling you the truth. You, if you just do a study on the Bible, you will end up with confusion. Yes, you will end up with confusion. So why would you say the Bible will end you in confusion? Paul said it. He said the letter kills. The letter kills. That's why when you're listening to people, when you listen to preachers, especially when someone stands and says he wants to teach you the word, when you're listening to him, the first thing you want to know from him in your listening is how did he get his information he's sharing with you. If he got it by study, get ready for error. If he tells you he studied and studied and found out, he checked the Greek, he checked the Hebrew, trust me, he's headed for error. That is not how the Bible was made to operate. That is not how we we're commanded to operate the scriptures. We don't operate it by studying. We study the Bible. But you see, the origin of our study is not from the point of intelligence. The origin of our study is from the point of the move of the Spirit. This is what makes the difference. If the Spirit is not your teacher, trust me, you will end up in confusion. That's why Paul said the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. What letter was he talking about? The letter of the scriptures. If you follow the letters, 
So I hear people say, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, you will never see Satan. Now, when, you know, when, when people talk like that, you know, just like I said on Thursday, you know, someone say um, that there was no titan in the New Testament. And I said, hey, hey, when did the New Testament start? So maybe it started in the book of Acts. Okay, question then is, when did the New Testament end? Um, yeah, you don't know. When did it end? So when they say, there was no tithing in the New Testament. Hey, we are part of the New Testament church and we tithe today. So how come you say there is no tithing in the New Testament? You see, what, when they say New Testament, they are referring to the, the New Testament part of the Bible. And then that's, that's, that's Gen, um, um, Matthew according to the separation of this Bible. Matthew to Revelation. And they think in their mind that everything was closed within that, those pages of the Bible. And that is their biggest error. That is their biggest error. You know, I think I was saying, sharing this on Thursday. Isn't it amazing that even the early church, the early disciples of Jesus Christ, these men walked with Jesus closely. They receive instructions from his mouth. Yet, it took the church over 50 years after Jesus left, over 50 years to realize by the message of Apostle Paul. Now I say, when I say over 50 years, I'm being, I'm dwelling on the on the minimum. It could have been well over, because I'm thinking, no, why, why do I say over 50 years? The, according to history, Paul got born again. You know, that's his experience on the way of Damascus was between 30 to 33 AD, meaning 33 years after Christ, after the death and resurrection of Christ. 30, 30 to 33 years. So that means Paul got born again about 30 years after. Now, when he got born again, he started his own spiritual journey and search for the Lord and knowledge. And then that took another 14 to 20 years. Then he got introduced to the apostles and he began to travel around. And then most of those things he began to teach in his letters, years later, years later. So when I say 50 years, you understand what I'm talking about? From when he got born again, was already 30. Then when he, he, he began his open ministry, it was about another 20 years old. Then the time he became so bold to start sharing these truths. Think about it. That was when the church, now Paul didn't walk with Jesus directly, but he became the one who taught them that the middle wall of partition has been broken. Peter experienced it but couldn't teach it because he didn't fully understand it. He didn't get it. He got it. God revealed it to him, but he was not taught it. So when he was sent to Colinius, God showed him a vision. What I have called clean, don't call unclean. And that was a good point for Peter to go before the Lord. Say, so what's this whole thing about clean and unclean? And then the Lord would have given Peter the true revelation of that truth. But probably he didn't. But he carried out the assignment God gave to him. He went to Cornelius' house, blessed them. The Holy Ghost came upon them. Whoa, wow, praise God. But he couldn't teach it. It took Paul coming and he being an apostle to the Gentiles. See that now? So God had to raise an apostle to the Gentiles. And he began to teach them. Now, what was he teaching them? Now, I want you to understand these things. He was teaching them that, hey, that middle wall of partition that separated you from God have been broken. What was that middle wall of partition? It was the law. Because because God gave the law to Israel, which, to, which we call the Jews, automatically, the rest of the world was condemned by God. Now that's what the law represented. And so Paul came preaching and teaching that that wall is broken. Now what does that mean? It means you, 
that is a Gentile, right now you are in. You have been invited in to the commonwealth of Israel. God didn't send a separate blessing to the Gentiles. No, he made the Gentiles and the Greek one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's what he did. So it took the early church, and even that, only God knows how many of them accepted that message truly. It took them over 50 years. Think about it. For their eyes to be open to that truth. Even though the truth happened at the death of Jesus Christ. Something that happened 50 years ago. And remember, Jesus spent 40 years teaching them the things concerning the kingdom after he was raised from the dead. He spent 50 years, and he spent 40 days teaching them these things. And yet they didn't get it. And then the Holy Ghost came 50 days after. And the Holy Ghost was supposed to teach them. But I guess they were not paying attention to the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit, just like many people are not paying attention to it today. They, they pay more attention to the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So they want to walk into a place and raise the dead. They want to walk into a place and heal the sick. They want to walk into a place and, and do all those mighty miracles that the power of the Holy Ghost was doing in their lives. And they were so excited by that that they didn't pay attention to the things that the Holy Spirit is teaching. And the greatest ministry of the Holy Ghost in our life is the teaching ministry, brothers and sisters. I didn't say he's sending us to go and do teaching ministry. I said the greatest ministry of the Holy Spirit, the most important ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life is to teach you. Maliko Mashiach. Because by teaching, he brings you into alignment with the plan of God. By teaching. There are times he may direct you to do some certain things and then you do those things and then you see some result. It doesn't mean you understand it yet. You only understand it when he teaches you. And when he teaches you, he now brings you into alignment with the understanding of what he has been doing from the beginning. So the people who try to demarcate the, the gospel between Old and New Testament, they are completely wrong completely wrong and i'm going to show you from scriptures we're talking about how to use the bible so they misuse the bible they misuse scriptures and then they end up in error so someone comes and say titan is of the law so because titan is of the law we in the new testament we are not of the law so because we are not of the law titan is we shouldn't be part of titan now when people talk like that i'm sorry to tell you this and and listen i say this with all humility and respect but you see i've got to tell you what the spirit of god have told me and what the lord said to me he said this to me i think sometime the last year or so the lord said to me he said listen son Anyone who is against Titan is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, when the Lord told me this, I, I felt it was too harsh. I'm telling you, I felt it was too harsh until the Lord began to make me understand. Now, the Lord began to teach me concerning Titan in the year 26, 20, 2006. 2006 i said the lord began to teach me i didn't go on a study for it personally it was the lord that began to teach me from my own experience because i'm going to share a little bit of that experience with you so you understand where i'm coming from you know the lord had told me to dwell in the city where i dwell in right now as at that time and i came to the city but things were not working because the lord told me don't start a church don't, don't, don't get a job. Don't start a church. So what am I called to do? What am I supposed to do? He says, at, at different time, I will give instruction and you will carry out my instruction. I said, that's ministry for him. So I stayed a few weeks. I didn't know anybody. Things were not working. Money wasn't coming in. I got tired and fed up and I left. I went back home. And then the Lord spoke to me and says, go back. 
I will beat the Lord. I'll explain my mind to him. <laughs> but then I will beat the Lord as I came back. And when I got back, the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, when I told you the kind of life you should live, you didn't ask me how you will live that life. So I said, okay, wow. Okay, Lord, I'm asking now. And then the Lord said this to me. I will never forget it. He said, son, I've got lots of money on the earth that you don't know of. I said, okay, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. I said, no. I said, okay, Lord, what are you talking about? And then the Lord said, the tithes. I said, the tithes? Why are you talking to me about it? I told me not to start a church. And then the Lord said, that's your problem. That's your confusion. And that was when the Lord began to explain to me what tithing is, the purpose of tithing. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, that's some revelation I will never trade for anything. For the first time my eyes was open, no man taught me this. The Spirit of God did teach me this. And when I said the Spirit of God did teach me this, He didn't just teach me in an aloof manner. I began to see from scriptures. I began to see from every part of the Bible that He's been saying this thing all along, but we never saw it. So when I teach on Titan, and I'm telling you the truth, that was not just when he taught me Titan. Between then and now, and as early as a few months ago, he is still upgrading that teaching, showing me more scriptures, bringing more understanding to me concerning this, this subject. And, and I look at it, I, I'm not, I'm not only, I, see, I'm not just grounded in this truth concerning Titan. I'm leaving it, praise God. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. So when the Lord said to me, it's those who are telling people not to tithe are walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I understand it fully. Because it's the truth. Now I didn't say they are the Antichrist. I said they are walking by. So, so, so it's easy. It's possible for one to submit himself to the spirit of the Antichrist. And you don't even know. That's why he sent me to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up today. Praise God. Hey, we're going to continue tomorrow. I, I pray for you that the Lord will help you and bring you to the place of great understanding, even by his spirit. Go out today and do well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.